This brief meeting is just going to go over our transition to online submissions instead of paper record books. And we're going to address some common questions we've received since we launched the platform. Uh, my name is Bethy, and we also have Mari here to answer some of those questions that I mentioned in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that any congressional or participant needs to do is register for the program. This is different than registering for the online submission platform. So registering for the congressional award is what gets a participant into our database and allows them to pay their one-time registration fee. Once they've done this and they're ready to start logging their goals and activities, they're going to need to create a submittable account. So this account is made on a different website than our website. It's congressionalaward.submittable.com. Um, and that can be accessed from our website. So once they register and then they're ready to start their record book, that's where they'll go. So in making your submittable account, participants should use the same email address that they registered for the program with. This just helps our office keep track of our participants. Um, just to reiterate, participants do not automatically have login information for submittable, so they need to register for the Congressional Award Program and then also make a submittable account. As you'll see on the homepage of submittable, uh, participants can expand the guidelines and make sure that they understand the program to the fullest extent, then they'll click apply to begin their application. It's important to note that users can save drafts of their submission and come back to continue working on it so they don't have to complete their virtual record book all in one sitting. When participants start their application, they're first going to fill out a general eligibility form. This just helps us verify that participants are registered for the program and that they're planning out goals and activities that fall within the guidelines of the program. So once they've filled this out, they can begin working on their actual record book. Uh, they will first fill out their general information, much like we have on our paper record book, confirming their most up-to-date address, designating what region they're in, and updating any contact information. It's important to note that the online record book is modeled directly off of the paper record book, so the information that we're requesting is not changing with the transition to online submissions. Uh, we're just getting a little more um, assurance that everyone is meeting the requirements, so that'll hopefully cut down on revisions on the uh, participant end. So as with our paper record books, participants will then begin answering questions about their goals and activities for each of the program areas, beginning with voluntary public service. Uh, once they've completed their activity for any of their goals, they can then send a reference form to their validator for that goal. This allows the validator to verify the participant's activity all from the comfort of their computer or cell phone, rather than requiring handwritten signatures as we do right now with paper record books. So again, as with our typical record book submissions, participants can add additional goals directly onto their submission if they have multiple goals. Um, and here you'll see that the activity log where users can add in their hours and months of activity is essentially the same as our paper record book as well. So they are um, adding in how many hours they're doing for their goal each month. And at the bottom of the activity log here, you can see that it'll automatically count the hours and months of activity that they have logged. So participants will repeat this process for the next two program areas, personal development and physical fitness. Uh, it's important to emphasize that reference forms for a validator should be sent after all activity is complete for a goal. So just as we do right now, um, require that validator signatures are dated after all the activity for a goal is complete. It's the same thing with our virtual record books. Those need to be signed off after the activity is done. For the Expedition Exploration Program area, participants are first going to select whether they completed the in-person option or the COVID-friendly virtual option. Uh, this accommodation of the virtual option has actually recently just been extended to June of 2022, um, just to give participants a little bit more time to transition. Um, and we'll make another determin determination uh, later next year if we need to extend it again. Uh, for the in-person option, users will fill in the location and date of their trip as well as their goals. 
overview of activities and answer each prompt related to their trip. They can also upload files with any additional documentation here, such as pictures or travel journals or anything like that. For the virtual option, participants are simply just going to upload a Word document with their write-up and instructions for this option are provided both on the submittable form and also on our website. Before submitting the virtual record book, participants will verify that they've met all the requirements of the program and send in their final reference form off to their advisor. It's very similar to the validator reference form and it's sent via email right on submittable. So again, this should not be sent until after all the activities have been completed. Um, they will also need to answer questions about their preference for receiving their medals and presentations before uh, fully submitting their application. So in a participant's application on Submittable, they can see who has completed their reference forms as validators and advisors. Uh, again, they should not submit their form to us until all of these forms have been filled out by their validators and advisors. We actually can't review submissions until all these reference forms have been completed. And while we hope that the extra questions regarding um, meeting requirements and the more detailed information we're providing on what counts and what doesn't count directly on the application, uh, while we're hoping and expecting that this will cut down on revisions a lot, it's still probably going to be a normal part of the process for many of our participants. So once an application is reviewed, if a user if a user's application does need revisions, they'll receive an email from their reviewer explaining what needs to be fixed or changed and alerting them that their application has been opened back up for editing. So they can then go in and submit their revisions to be reviewed. Once an application is approved, participants will be notified via email. They can also check on the status of their application at any time by logging into their submittable account. Once they're ready to begin another level, they're going to go to our website and request a link to their new application. This is on the current participants page of our website and they'll receive a link to the specific level that they've requested. Um, it's important to note that the four to six week timeline for review is still currently in place and six to eight weeks for gold medals. And so that really wraps up the main part of the presentation, um, but here you'll see a screenshot of a common error that we've been getting with some of our users. Um, in this case, if you see this message, you'll simply click on the first link that says view this organization submission page and it'll take you to the correct place. And then we also have um, some login notes just with some other errors that we've been receiving. Um, if you need help logging into a submittable account or you've forgotten your password, you would contact submittable, not congressional award, just because it is a different website and different platform. Uh, when you sign up for a submittable account and you try to log in, if you encounter that error, like I said, just press that first link and it'll take you to the correct page. Some other questions that we've been getting um, is that do parents, advisors, or validators need to make their own submittable account? And that is no, or only the participant needs to make a submittable account. The validators and advisors, like I said, will receive a reference form that they can complete um, just via email. They don't need to make a submittable account. Uh, will a participant be able to know their application status with submittable? Yes. As I mentioned, participants can log in at any time and see exactly where they are in the review process. It'll also make it a lot easier for participants to directly communicate with their reviewer so they can send messages directly on their application. Can a participant work on their next application while the current one is being reviewed? Yes, participants can start their next level while their current level is being reviewed. Um, same rule that we have with our current uh, paper record books, they can begin working on the next level as soon as they've submitted for one. Um, they would just have to go to the link on our website and request the next level that they want to work on. Uh, if I plan to submit in 2022, then that participant would want to wait until January to start their application. If they've already begun it, um, they can save their progress and then they would just need to refill any application. With Submittable, the record book um, basically just copies itself over to the next year in the calendar year. Um, the information is not changing, but um, 
just with how the website's set up and how our activity log works, it does need to be a different form that they're going to fill out. Um, and as I touched on before, the COVID accommodation of virtual expeditions and explorations has been extended through June of 2022 right now. Um, and we will make sure that Submittable accommodates that until that date, unless, of course, we decide to extend that again. Um, another common question that we've got is about multiple goals. So participants can have up to four voluntary public service goals, two personal development goals, and two physical fitness goals uh, for their submissions. When um, students have tried to add multiple goals on Submittable, we've noticed that they are unable to take off a multiple goal, an, an additional goal if they didn't mean to do that. So if they do that on accident and they don't actually have another goal, they'll, they'll just need to write NA in that space and we'll know that that, that was made in here. Um, one question that we definitely want to emphasize is when should participants be sending their reference forms off to their validators and advisors? And again, that's going to be as soon as their activity is complete for that goal. Um, for advisors, it would be all of their activities being completed, since that should be the last person who is signing off on anything. And that pretty much concludes the presentation. If um, people are still confused or need clarification on anything, you can always reach out to your program manager or information at congressionalaward.org. Um, and we'll be happy to help with any questions you may have. Um, Mari, did we want to go over any questions live at this point? Hi. A question that was asked in the chat was, can Bethy explain how to add a goal? Sure. So on Submittable, um, when the participants logged into their application, they're once they fill out one goal for voluntary public service, for example, once they've um, answered the questions regarding their goal, their activities, what they learned from participating in those activities, um, and basically all the questions relating to that first goal, there's a checkbox that says, please check here if you have an additional goal. Once they do that, those same questions will pop up again, and it'll say goal number two. Thank you. Um, and someone had a question about how does the virtual exploration work with Submittable? Sure, so the virtual expedition exploration, it'll remain the same, um, same requirements that we have right now. Uh, it's basically just a write-up where they're answering prompts and completing activities um, that we've provided options for. And again, those instructions can be found on our website or on the Submittable form. Um, so the participant would just complete their write-up on a Word document and then upload that file into their submittable form. Thank you. The next question is, a person would like to know, what does the validator see when they receive their notification? How does submittable know that my validator validated my record book if the validator does not have an account? Great question. So I believe, yes, so here's the validator verification form right here. Um, this is what they'll see. Uh, this is what the participant sees when they send it off. What the validator sees is a form that says, um, you've been sent this request on behalf of whoever has sent it. Um, please check here if you verify the hours and months of activity that this participant has recorded um, and then it, leaves a space for any comments that you might have about the activity as well. So it's really the same um, verification that we have on our paper record book. Like I said, it's really modeled directly off of that. Um, but again, you do not need to make a submittable account. Once they put in the validator's email address, only someone um, with that email address has access to that link. Thank you. And this was a note from a previous program manager for um, everyone viewing. If one of your explorations was already um, met at a previous goal, what should your participant put in that section when they're applying for their new goal? They would write 
a requirement met in previous award under the exploration word document space. And Bethy, you can elaborate on that if you'd like. Yeah, so I think you definitely covered it great. Um, I think something that we definitely want to emphasize is that the submittable platform will make communicating with the reviewer a lot easier and a lot quicker. So with anything that um, we'll encounter in the transition, such as someone who has already met the requirements for something, um, it's going to be really easy for that participant to just message their program manager and say, this is this has already been met or put that in our application and um, take care of any errors that we get from that uh, very efficiently. Thank you. Um, we have just two more questions. One question is, will the participant be able to know when their validator signed? Yes, that's a great question. So participants can see on their submittable application which reference forms have been complete. Um, and again, they should not submit their application to us until all of their reference forms have been complete. So they should receive an email um, that their reference form has been completed. But if they miss their e the email or it goes to their junk on accident or something like that, they can always log in and open up their application and see which forms have been completed. Thank you. And um, our next question is about how to carry over hours. So they would like to submit in 2022, but they have started recording on submittable. What should they do in the new year? So if they run into this problem where they've already started their application and then they're saving it as a draft and then the calendar year switches and they need to submit then, what they would do is just go into their saved draft um, version that they've already began to fill out and just copy and paste it into the other version. Um, they'll still be able to access it. It'll be really easy. They just won't be able to submit that version. Thank you, Bethy. And that is all of our questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mari, for your help with the Q&A. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be sending out this presentation and covering um, some more of these questions we've gotten uh, next week. So everyone will have access to this. But hopefully this was helpful and gave you um, a good view of what uh, the submission process is going to look like with moving forward. So thanks everyone again for joining and we will see you next time on our next workshop. Have a great night.